Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to continue the second part of SIP protocol. I hope you guys checked my first video, first part of the SIP video. So let's continue with there with the SIP messages header. So I hope we discussed, we already discussed about the SIP messages header that is uh, mandatory SIP headers that is request URI via to from call ID C6 and the contact headers. So we, we discussed about these headers, not in much detail, but we, we just discussed about these headers. So now let's continue with the rest of the things. So this is the normal uh, SIP call flow from one user agent to the another user agent. That is the first one is Alice and the second one is Bob. So you can see it here. It is just uh, when user agent one sent an invite to the user agent two, it contains offer. It means this is an early offer and it just sent back with the 100 trying and one at ringing. Then 200, okay, that which contains the answer that is that means it contains all the things like after negotiation, it will send all the things in 200. Okay, that is a, an, an example of early and an, an early offer. So it will just send the acknowledgement and then the RTP is established. So now after that, we will discuss about invite, ACK and the buy message in detail. So let's discuss about the invite message first. So there is an invite message from user agent one to user agent two. As you can see on my screen, the invite message is going from Alice to the Bob. So what all are the things it will check when it when it just send a message? Let me just change the pointer options. OK, so there is an invite from Alice to Bob. So invite message contains Bob at the rate the IP address. So it knows the IP address, then it is just sending the invite message directly to the Bob. So it is this request is coming via header. So via it means via header, you can say uh, Alice phone is registered on the CUCN. So it it is come, it is giving the request from CUCN. So the request from Alice to Bob is going via CUCN. So that's why it is saying pc33.atlanta.com. So we will discuss about max forwards and all other headers in detail as well. Then there will be a 200 OK message from Bob to Alice. So it contains the same things like it will just send the SIP 200 OK message via that server, that CUCN server. After that, it, there will be an ACK message from Alice to Bob and ACK contains the same things. Bob and the red IP address and the via header contains the CUCM IP address. And after that, the session will establish and there will be a buy message from Bob to Alice and then there will be a 200 OK from Alice to Bob. So let me show you something related with the CSEC header. This one in this example as well. Let's come back to the first one so you will be able to see. So in this invite message, you will be able to see there is a CSEC header which shows 314159 invite. So whenever you are getting a reply from Bob to Alice, you will be able to see it will show the same CSEC number. Let me show you. So now you can see this is a SIP 200 OK message, but in the CSEC, it contains the same number 314159 invite. It means this 200 OK is the reply of that invite message, which has CSEC number of 314159. Then we have ACK. So the ACK is a request from the like, like ACK is a response of 200 OK. So this ACK contains 314159 with the ACK. So ACK doesn't need any response. So that's why there will be uh, nothing is there. Then session will establish. And in by you can see, in the buy message, there is a CSEC number that is 231 buy. And then once 200 OK is there, it will show the CSEC number as well. So 200 OK is there. So this 200 OK CSEC shows 231 buy. It means this 200 OK is the reply of 231 buy message. So you can see in this example, there are two 200 OKs. One is from invite and another one is from buy, the reply of buy message. So 
from this csec number you will be able to identify like this 200 okay is the reply of which invite either it could be from invite message reply or it is a by message reply so from this csec number you will be able to see it because this is this is just an example this is just a small example once you are in the production environment then you will be able to see lots of invite messages lots of 200 okay lots of by message then it will be difficult to find like this 200 okay is a reply of which message so from this csec number you will be able to identify it okay let's move on to the next one so next we have sip methods with proxy so earlier we have we just had two things alice and bob there is nothing in between like proxy and anything there is nothing in between that so now we have a proxy server in between alice and bob now you will be able to see the invite messages exchange of invite message so first invite message is from alice to sip proxy server so you can see it here the now the invite is invite message is bob at the rate by loxy.com so that is our you can say this is the our proxy server in our previous example there was there was an ip address of bob so now we have sip proxy server in between so now this is an invite from uh from alice to the bob at the rate by loxy.com this is a sip proxy server in the via header you can say that via it means it is coming from the like you can just say an example that this is coming from the cuc because phone is getting registered on that so now this is just a normal thing now another next invite message is from sip proxy server to the bob then you will be able to see a different message in invite so now the next message is from sip proxy server to bob so now in this invite you can see this proxy server added the ip address of bob you can see bob at the rate 192.168.10.20 that is the ip address of bob so here you will be able to see two via headers so one via header is from the previous request that is from the cucm now the next via header which is showing here is from this sip proxy server because this request is coming via this proxy server that's why it added this server proxy server server 10 dot .com as well and you will be able to see this max forward is also reduced by one in early earlier uh, when there was an invite from alice to sip server there was max forwards as 70 now it's a max forward as 69 so via header for alice phone via header for big box 3 server and this is a max forward decreases by one and if there is any other sip proxy server like there is one sip proxy server as well in between this sip proxy server and the bob let's just take an example there is one another sip proxy server then there will be invite from this sip proxy server to another sip proxy server and it will show the max forwards as 69 and then when there is another request another invite message from this sip proxy server to bob then this max forwards will decrease by one again it means it will show the 68 number in the max forward it means it can just jump onto the maximum 68 hopes after that thing now let's move on to the next so now after invite there will be a like like there is a 100 trying 180 ringing as well there but it is just not showing up here so now bob is sending 200 okay so it is sending 200 okay and it contains the both via headers so the first one that is the sip proxy server server 10 .com, and another one was the like cucm server that was in the previous request so once this SIP proxy server receives the 200 OK, it will just forward this 200 OK to the Alice. You can see both via headers in this 200 OK. Next part, this SIP proxy server is sending 200 OK to the Alice. And now you can see there is only one via header because this via header is already in the previous request and it already received it. So now SIP proxy server is sending its 200 OK to the Alice and there is only one via via header that is pc33.atlanta.com that is you can see it means it's the cucm server ip and you can notice this is the only one via header in this message after that there will be an acknowledgement from alice to the bob because now there is an acknowledgement there is not an acknowledgement from alice to say proxy say proxy because alice knows the ip address of bob. 
Bob. So that's why you can see it here. Acknowledgement shows Bob at the rate 192.168.10.20. So now it is sending the request directly to the Bob, and that's why it contains only one via header that is CUCM IP. And here you can see the max for versus 70 because it is sending the request directly from Alice to Bob. Because now they know they both both knows each other's IP address. After that, there will be a session established and there will be a buy message from Bob to Alice. You can see there is a buy message to the Alice. Alice at the rate 10.1.3.33. It means Bob already knows the IP address. That's why it is sending directly to the Alice. And another thing, the session is also getting established between two end users only, not in the like with the CUCM or the SIP proxy servers. RTP established only between the end users. So now here you can see the same things. CSEC 231 buy, and once there will be a 200 OK, you will see the same CSEC number. Now this is a 200 OK from Alice to Bob, and CSEC number shows 231 buy. So because of this CSEC number, you will be able to find this is this 200 OK is the reply of this buy message. Then we have one thing that is stateless versus stateful. So what is transaction stateless? So transaction stateless, it's, it means the proxy server forwards all message and response without maintaining any state. It will not maintain any state. It will just forward all the messages and the response as well. And what is transaction stateful? As you can see the definition, the proxy server that receives a SIP request, it will retain the state of that transaction until that server receives a final response. Final response means either it could be a 2xx, 3xx, 4, 5, and 6xx response. It should be something, 200, okay, 201, 301, 4, 4, 86, 4, 8, 7, anything. There must be a final response. And the transaction stateful has no knowledge of a session update request, a transfer request, or a termination request. Okay, so now, and then we have two things that is record route and the route headers. So the record route header, this is an optional zip message header actually, but you, you should know about that, that record route header message. So what is record route header message? As you can see, we already uh, discussed about, we, we already have this uh, zip proxy server in our previous example, that is server10.byloxy.com. So this is an optional zip message header. It, can be inserted by any proxy or all proxies viewing a SIP message. And this request, it is a request that all SIP requests and responses for that dialogue, means the same call ID, be routed through that proxy. And if, if there is any, any new request outside of that dialogue, that will be treated, in, treated as independently route header. And what is route? That is record route. This is record route. It is built from record route header. This is a record route header and this is a route. So this route header built from record route header field in the same call ID response. And this header field deleted at SIP element identified by URI. And that is, this is useful mainly for the billing CDR and the call control thing. I, I'll show you uh, the examples for the record route headers and the route headers. So now you can see this is a call flow with stateful proxy. Now we have Alice, that is user agent one, SIP proxy server, and then we have Bob, that is user agent two. So now there is an invite from Alice to the SIP proxy, and then there will be an invite from SIP proxy to the Bob, which contains the route record route headers that you can see invite with record route header. Then there will be a 180 ringing with record route header. Then there will be 180 ringing from SIP proxy to Alice. Then we have 200 OK with route record route headers. And then another 200 OK from SIP proxy to Alice. After that, there will be an acknowledgement with route header. Here you can see earlier we had record route header and route header is coming from the record route header, which we discussed in our previous definition in the previous slide. So now there is an acknowledgement with the route header from Alice to SIP proxy. And then there will be an acknowledgement from, from SIP proxy to Bob, which doesn't contain any route header because we already had one on. And then there will be a session established. Then there will be a buy message with the route header, only one route header, because we don't have record route. This is a route header. And then there will be a 200 OK with neither header. No header is there, neither record route or a route header. 
So here you can see 200 OK to the by 200 OK. This 200 OK uses via headers to determine message path because we must have via headers in our uh, uh, messages, we can say. That's why it use only the via headers to determine the message, like what will be the message path. So let me show you these things here. So now SIP methods with record route. Let's discuss about this thing. So this is an invite message from Alice to SIP proxy server. This is just a normal message, which we already discussed in previous slides as well, like normal SIP message with the via header and all these things next forward. So now, now there will be an invite message, next invite message from SIP's proxy server to the bow, and you can see there is a record route header which is had added here. This is an optional, but we can add it. So new record route header, you can see it here, record route, that is server 10.biloxy.com. So now after that, Bob will send something. So this is just a record route header, just to show you like how it got added. So let's discuss in detail in the next slide. So now you can see uh, earlier we had, uh, uh, I think SIP methods with record route. Okay, now we have a call flow with state full proxies. So let's check it out. So now Alice is sending an invite message to the atlanta.com, that is a SIP proxy server. And then another, we have a biloxy.com, that, that is our another proxy server. And then we have another uh, uh, user agent, that is Bob. So we will see all those messages between the uh, atlanta.com, biloxy.com, Alice and the Bob. So let's check it out. So now there was first invite message from Alice to the atlanta.com. And then we have an invite message from atlanta.com to the biloxy.com, which contains route record route header, which we discussed about record, record route header in our previous slide. So you can see it here, it just added one record route header. You can see record route header, the first atlanta.com, this one. So it just added one record route header, bigbox3.atlanta.com. And then there will be another record route header, which will be added once there is an invite message from Biloxy to the Bob. So now we can see another invite message that is from Biloxy to the Bob, which with invite with two record route headers. So here you can see record route header server 10.biloxy.com that is one record route header, this one, and another record route header that is bigbox 3atlanta So first one is biloxy, another one is atlanta.com, which is you can see it here and in the record route. So two record route headers. Then we have what is like, it is just showing that like what, what record route headers we have record route server 10 dot by Loxy and the big box 3 dot Atlanta or record route uh, server 10 dot same in SIP headers. So, uh, okay, let's move on to the next thing. So we had invite with two record route headers and then there will be a 180 ringing with two route headers, record route headers from Bob to by Loxy. So by Loxy is sending 180 ringing again with two record route headers and atlanta.com is sending record, two record route headers to the LS. Then we have 200 OK with two record route headers from Bob to Biloxi, Biloxi to Atlanta, and then Atlanta to LS. After that, you will be able to see the acknowledgement because it should be there. Acknowledgement after 200 OK should be there. So first acknowledgement will show route headers, not the record route. Acknowledgement will show the two route headers. You can see it in the example here. The acknowledgement is showing two route headers. This is an acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is sending to the Bob directly, but it is just showing it like how it is showing the route header. So first it will show two, then one. So now you can see the route header is showing two, big box 3.atlanta and the server 10.biloxy. After that, you will be able to see another acknowledge. You can see it here, another acknowledgement with one route header from atlanta.com to the biloxy. And then there will be no route header from biloxy to Bob. And after that, once the acknowledgement is there, after that session will establish. And then there will be a buy message from Alice to Atlanta with two route headers. Then we have one route headers because one is already there. One 
because it already reached to the one route headers. And then once it reached to the biloxy.com, then biloxy.com will send by message to the Bob with no route headers. And then there will be a 200 okay from Bob, 200 okay by, by, by. So first 200 okay by is from Bob to biloxy, then biloxy to Atlanta, and then Atlanta to Alice. So now why there is no route header in the 200 okay? As you can see, 200 okay to the by, it uses via headers to determine the message path. So 200 okay, which is the 200 okay, which is for, for, from the by message, it uses via headers because via header must be there in that. So it is using via header to determine what is the message path. That's why it doesn't contain the route headers. Okay, it, it's just a, a comparison between the record route and the via headers. So the record route, as you can see, record route is like not a mandatory header in all sub requests, but yeah, you, we can add it, we can check it. Record route header is add by proxies. Yeah, proxies adding the record route headers. Record route header field is inserted by proxies in a request to force future request in the dialog to be routed through proxy. So it is forcing the future request so that those requests will get routed through the proxy server. It is specified in that RFC. So, and then the via header, via header is mandatory header. Via header is mandatory header in all SIP requests. Via header is adding added by the originator. Like if Alice is sending the request, then Alice, there is a responsibility of Alice to add the via header. Alice, we can say the user agent one. So via header field indicates the transport used for transaction and identifies location where the response is to be sent. It is also like specified in the RFC 3261. Then there is a comparison between the 180 versus 183. So 180 ringing, 180 ringing is coming like as for a local ring back and originating party is responsible for the ring back. So let's, let me give you a brief on this 180 ringing. So whenever there is a request, there is an invite message from user agent one to user agent two, then there will be a hundred trying from user agent two to user agent one. And then user agent two will send the 180 ringing to the user agent one. So uh, it's you can just take an example, user agent one as Alice. So Alice will hear a ring back tone. Like if you are calling someone to your phone, then you will be able to hear the ring back. So that ring back coming on your phone is from the local phone from which you are dialing not from the other party's phone. That is a local ring back tone from your phone, which is which you can hear. That is that you can see it is a local ring back once you are once the 180 ringing message is coming from the other party. So originating party is responsible for that ring back, which which you are hearing once you are calling some. And 183 session progress is a remote ring back. 183 session progress, it means the media with the media which is playing at that time like if you are calling someone from your cell phone to another cell phone and once you are able to hear a uh, dial it on instead of that ring back that is from the ring uh, remote party that is from the remote party because remote party has a dial it on and you are hearing in your cell phone it means that that dial on is coming from the remote party. That's why 180 session progress it contains a remote ring back. It means it, it is just showing like far end place in band ring back and it opens just media channel with the SDP. Okay, next we have a cancel request like how like we are going to discuss the cancel request here. Whenever like uh, LS is sending an invite message, yeah, let me let me just uh, show you. So cancel. Let's just uh, uh, give you a definition. It discontinues pending requests. Does not terminate sessions that have been accepted. So first, there is an invite from Alice to Bob. There is a you can see it in the example here. Invite message. It also it contains all the same things via header, max forwards from to call ID, CSEC number, contact content length, content length, everything. And this is this is just an example. I will show you the live traces as well. Like I just took the live traces, and I will show you all things like 
there are so many 200 okay messages so many invite messages which is receiving like message received and message sent i will show you in the example i means I, I just took all the traces and i will show you in the video as well so there will be a first invite from alice to bob then uh, if someone is not replying like there is no no hundred trying from bob to the alice then it will it can just send another invite as well or there, there are so many scenarios as well so right now we are discussing about the cancel first so let me just uh, tell you about that so now after invite Alice just disconnect the phone, you can say. So it means there is a cancel request from Alice to Bob. So it, it needs to uh, like give the reason as well. So reason header will give the reason. You will see the this reason header. Reason header will give the reason as well. Like it is just uh, showing the course code that is 486 and text is showing as busy here. It means once Alice is calling to the Bob, uh, uh, it, uh, he is just hearing the busy tone. So it means Bob is busy there. That, that's why Alice just canceled the request. So here you can see here, the caller may have hung up to accept another call before the first was accepted. So once the cancel request is there from Alice to Bob, then Bob should respond with the 200 okay. And that 200 okay, like you can see it here, it is showing 200 okay with the cancel because this 200 okay is not a reply of this invite message. This 200 okay is a reply of this cancel request. Let me let me just show you the CSAC number of the first invite. So you can you can see it here. This invite contains the 314159 number, and then there is a, a cancel that CSAC number is 10197. So once 200 OK is there, then that CSEC should show 10197. Here you can see this 200 OK, which is a reply of cancel. It is it is containing the 10197 CSEC number, which is the CSEC number of that cancel request. So 200 OK to the cancel acknowledges the session will acknowledges the session will not be established. So then uh, after 200, OK, it is just uh, sending the 487 request terminated. It means the request is already terminated. 487 request terminated is the proper response to the cancel request. So it means request is now terminated from the Bob side. That's why it is sending the request terminated. So request terminated. Now you can see request why request terminated is there because there were there was a invite message as well so it should respond with something so that's why 487 request terminated is the response of that invite and you can see in the csec number 314159 invite so once invite message was there there was a csec number that was 314159 and that's why this is a this is a response of that invite message and that's why it contains a csec number of that invite message so that you will be able to identify that this 487 request terminated response is a uh, 487 request terminated is a response of the first invite message and you can identify that thing from this csec number on like you can say 487 request terminated is the proper response to the cancel request. So after that, say, after that, there will be an acknowledgement and acknowledgement always follow a 4xx response. So once there is a 4xx message that is 47 request terminated, it will just send the acknowledgement. And in, in this acknowledgement, you can see this 3-1 acknowledgement. It, it, acknowledgement, I hope you guys know that acknowledgement is uh, uh just a single transaction it is neither a re reply or neither an invite neither a response you can say so this uh, acknowledgement is there after that we can uh, we can discuss about that cancel and buy so cancel is used to terminate pending sessions and buy is used to terminate an established session so whenever there is an rtp stream then we have a buy and when there is a no RTP stream, then there's a like, it is just terminating the pending session. Abandoned request before final response, yep. And cancel has no two tag. So two tag will not be there in cancel request. And then the buy accepted request with 200 okay and buy needs to have two tag. This two tag should be there in a buy of the established dialogue. 
so in our next lecture we'll discuss about the options prac message prac that which is a very very important topic and then we'll discuss about the update and the refer requests as well and then we'll see uh, the scenarios of three way calls three way conference calls and uh, we will discuss about the few scenarios as well in which uh, uh, sometimes when like gateway is not available so that first gateway is not available then you need to jump onto the next gateway or we'll discuss about that example in which uh, if the person is busy then uh, then that call should route it to their admin and or that call should route it to their vm so we'll discuss about all these scenarios and we'll discuss about the uh, live traces of the sip that will be in my upcoming lectures we will discuss about those things in detail so uh, i i hope you like this video i hope you really enjoyed it and learned something from it if you learned something like then please like share and subscribe it and please press the bell icon so that you will be uh, receiving my no you will be receiving notifications of my new upcoming videos thank you